Hi, uh, today's Dr. Kang's scuba diving story goes to bubbles and alveoli. I uh, want to talk about some miracle, uh, some fantastic phenomenon that happens in our lung when we dive. Of course, when we live. Um, so I picked the topic of bubbles and alveoli which means when we dive we have bubbles in our blood circulation it goes to the heart and then it goes to the alveolus and what happens after they pass through the alveolus membrane the bubbles are gone so talk about bubble uh, and then uh, we'll talk about the alveoli anatomy physiology function and the relationship to diving uh, of course this is not a real a photo of bubbles in the blood it's uh, just a, a, a drawing but this is a real picture we have done some uh, bubble formation test dive uh, three times and uh, we saw very interesting cases like this. Uh, there's a lot of bubbles here and the same heart after a one hour surface interval there's no bubble left in the circulation. Uh, so let's see what happened after diving. Nitrogen absorption, and Dr. Halley explained it. Then the tissues will be will be keeping on being saturated, and when uh, on ascent, those nitrogen will form bubbles and come into the blood circulation, and then it will come to our heart, right atrium right to ventricle and then go to the lung and at alveolus they leave our body so during ascent and during surface interval the bubbles leave our body um, but if there is some too much bubbles or too fast growing bubbles they can make thrombus to venous channel or push the inter-arterial circulation and um, they can cause uh, arterial uh, cerebral arterial gas impulse. So alveolus, the anatomy, physiology and diving. Um, alveolus comes from Latin word. It's a hollow cup-shaped cavity is alveolus which really look like an um, alveoli. At the end of the respiratory tract, there are many, many, many alveoli. So this is a respiratory tract or a respiratory tree. And then at the end of the tree, branches are alveoli. That's where the gas exchange happens. And this shows how small it is. Uh, the membrane of the alveolus, the thickness is about 0 0.2, 0 0.6 micrometer. Our hair is like 10 to 200. To me, I have uh, no micrometer. But uh, one micrometer equaling 1 multiplied by 10 minus 6 meter. So this is the picture of hair. This is hair. And this is the smallest size of copper. And human technology. Amazing. Again, the anatomy. There are like 300 million alveoli. I mean 300 million alveoli in two lungs. 
that's a, that's a lot, isn't it? So if we dissect the whole alveolus, whole alveoli, and we kind of press it down, it will go to 70 meters square of surface area, which is the size of a single match tennis court. So when we breathe in, the oxygen will be absorbed in our body on the size of tennis court. Very effective, unless for some reason you lose a lot of alveolus. Every puff of smoking kills some or many alveoli. 300 million can go away quickly. Life is short. That can give you irreversible damage to your <coughs> alveoli. And smokers, you are doing your personal human experiment of how long it will take for cigarette to kill your body, to kill your lung. So, particularly for divers on my side, please quit diving as soon as possible. Um, this is the diagram of alveolus. So look at the look at the artery and vein mixing together. So, <clears throat> so right there, the gas exchange happens. Oxygen absorbed, uh, carbon dioxide uh, excreted out, as well as nitrogen bubble if we dived. So, um, alveoli, that's where the gas exchange takes place. Um, oxygen is diffused into the capillaries into our body and carbon dioxide is released. This is a very typical of a mammalian, mammalian lungs. Other species have different shape and function. Again, um, capillaries. This is a... Whoever made human body must be an amazing existence. Diving and alveolus, alveoli. Smoking is very hazardous. Um, and then is related to lung overexpansion injury. And as I have said before, we have some subcutaneous emphysema without lung overexpansion injury. So these are related to diving. Uh, this is my uh, YouTube channel. You may have had a chance to watch it, but it's about the diving and smoking. I have it in English as well. Um, and then uh, alveoli uh, nitrogen elimination. I think I talked about this uh, before. So, lung overexpansion injury. Um, if we ascend, not breathing, the air in our alveolus will expand. And when the pressure change exceeds 0 0.3 ATA, then this alveolus will rupture and the air escape from your lung will be accumulated in different places. Let's see where they can go. They can go to subcutaneous tissue, they can go to pleural cavity which is a space between two layers of pleura covering the lungs and then go to mediastinal cavity. That's where uh, your heart is located and then into the arterial circulation and then give you subcutaneous emphysema, pneumothorax, uh, mediastinal emphysema and then arterial or cerebral arterial gas embolism. Here we can see some air 
right here under the skin of your shoulder this is subcutaneous emphysema when you have pneumothorax this is the <coughs> lung and this is the lung also but it is being collapsed because of the high pressure of the air that is trapped in the pleural cavity and you cannot breathe too well at all um, this also shows the, the air so air surrounding the pleural cavity and then uh, mediastinal emphysema look at this air right here it's circling your heart so when there's a lot of air there your heart cannot pump so you have um, all kind of uh, symptoms cerebral arterial gas embolism this is very serious and has a very high incidence or well, very very low survival rate and these are the bubbles caught in the artery so how we take care of the lung overexpansion injury first aid and treatment let's see this so cutaneous emphysema we can just uh, uh, observe how it goes they usually observe themselves for me to see it takes like a, a week sometimes a little longer but they usually go away no chamber therapy is needed uh, pneumothorax in most cases if we have pneumothorax we need some surgical intervention just put some tube in in the airspace and uh, let it uh, escape out of the lung cavity. Uh, medial stenal emphysema. In most cases, if medial stenal emphysema happens after diving, the amount of air is very limited. So, in most cases, you can just uh, wait and see. But if there's a lot of air coming into our mediastinal cavity we need to go to hospital immediately because his heart cannot pump effectively and then the hospital we can uh, remove the air in the mediastinal cavity with some needles so don't just believe in, in the book uh, some uh, diverse manual says wait and see it's not always like that mediastinal emphysema can be a uh, emergency uh, situation cerebral arterial gas embolism we need a very vigorous medical therapy for this not just the chamber we have to take care of the patient like all other stroke cases uh, I think I talked about this before. It's about subcutaneous emphysema without lung overexpansion injury. And um, it happens when you valsalva too hard, uh, the pressure inside your um, alveolar space can go up and it can rupture the thin alveolar membrane. The air escapes they go to subcutaneous tissue and it's not it's in mostly in most cases it's not very severe so we can wait and see diving it's better you take some uh, good long surface interval I recommend the four weeks give your alveoli time to heal um, so today I talked about bubbles and alveoli my point on this one is give yourself a sufficient length of surface surface interval now many dives over many days all diving operations say take one hour surface interval minimum at least stick to it many divers just disregard it and push to go back to water it's very dangerous um, 
take a good surface interval and enjoy the rest of your diving for the rest of your life. Thank you very much for listening and this is uh, Bubbles and Alveoli and I will see you soon. Bye bye.